when we protest in Australia against the CCP, and we, when we protest in an area that you know has a large Taiwanese and Congo Chinese population, we're protesting on behalf of those who are silenced, who are intimidated, who are threatened by the CCP. We're protesting to try and you know give a voice to those people who are threatened. And so I went out to Eastwood, which is you know one of these very diverse suburbs. I was with our candidate Kim Zum Dongdu. This shopping centre we were at. It was like the main thoroughfare in the seat, so all the other candidates were campaigning there, like the Labor and Liberal candidates. And so we went there to campaign as well. And um, you know, a Taiwanese friend was with me, a Hong Konger friend was with me, Tibetans as well. And they, my Taiwanese friend, wrote on a sign, basically F Xi Jinping, and we'll and was like, let's hold this up, you know, just as a, just as an expression of like, as an expression of defiance in the face of censorship, as a way to express our belief in free speech. Um, in the face of intimidation and you know threats, let's let's in, let's protest against the CCP and Xi Jinping personally. You know, in the heart of Sydney, and so I went out and did it. My Taiwanese friend wrote in characters on the sign "F Xi Jinping," and um, went out and protested. Obviously, I was completely peaceful. I wasn't insulting anyone directly. It wasn't a racist sign against Chinese Australians by any means. It was a protest sign that was directly targeted at Xi Jinping only, a brutal dictator who's never been elected by the Chinese people. And I held up the sign that said F. Xi Jinping. And within two minutes, we were surrounded by like really, really, you know, aggressive supporters of the Chinese government. Basically, a, a crowd of about 50, 60 people formed, and there were about five or six, maybe three or four, sorry, three or four guys, um, Chinese government supporters who were like who were there, and they were really aggressive to the point of violence. And so, an independent protest journalist, a guy who was just filming the protest, um, one of these Chinese government supporters came up behind him. Um, you know, put him in a bear hug, was crushing his ribs, tried to grab his camera and smash it on the ground. And then at that point after that, they came up to me, they motioned like they're about to hit me. Um, and then they grabbed my sign, ripped it in half, stomped on it on the ground. And the whole time they were swearing and um, and chanting at us and, and they were calling us, they were calling me like white pig, white monkey. They were hurling racial slurs at my Taiwanese friend. They were calling her rotten banana, meaning yellow on the outside, white on the inside, these really, really sick racial slurs. They were, they were directing towards, um, they were directing these really sick racial slurs against, you know, the Taiwanese, Hong Konger supporters that were with us. And, um, and they kept on like motioning, like, like multiple times they got up in my space. They were, they were about to hit me sort of thing. And I had my hand, I actually, at that point, I put my hands behind my back and I was like, you know, I'm completely peaceful. It's going to hit me, hit me. Like, Basically, just I, I was trying to show that I wouldn't be intimidated by these thugs. And then the police came. But for some reason, the police didn't go to protect us. I mean, the police, when they came, it was almost immediately like they were there to go after me. So the guy who attacked me and attacked the cameraman, um, in broad daylight, 50 people watching in the middle of Sydney, people filming, broad daylight, attacking people. Um, they didn't arrest him there. Ultimately, they did charge him after a massive public outcry but they didn't arrest him. Um, meanwhile, like, you know, they they were trying to, like, intimidate me sort of thing. They, they got me to come to the station, give a statement. I made a statement about the violence attack that we received, said we will press charges against the guy who assaulted us. And um, the, the police, they, they wanted me to give a statement, and, and I gave a statement um, about the assault. So were you, were, you, were you arrested, or did they just invite you to come to the station right now? Um, not at that point, but they wanted me to go into the station. And so at that point, I thought everything was fine. I thought surely the police will see that I was a peaceful protester and, the, you know, all the violence was coming from the pro-CCP crowd. Surely they're going to be trying to protect us. And so I gave that statement in good faith, etc. Then the next day, I was about to go home back to Brisbane, my hometown, and um, I was about to get to the airport and I got called up by the detective and he was like, oh, I need you to come back in to discuss your statement. And I was like, why do you need me to come back in? I've already given you my statement. I, and I, I sort of had a bit of a intuition. I was like, uh, are you like looking at my sign? Are you, are you going to be looking at charging me too? Because by that point it had gone super viral. I posted up the footage and it had gotten like a million views, which is like, you know, I, I didn't expect it to go that viral. No way. And, um, and there were a lot of pre, pro CCP guys who like were inciting violence on Twitter. They were posting up, say my family's addresses. Um, they were trying to encourage people to act my parents there were people sending death threats, um, saying that I deserve to be bashed, and um, and some of them were saying they didn't go far enough in bashing me, etc. 
And a lot of them were also like tagging New South Wales police. Like, for example, some pro, some pro CCP um, propagandists, state media propagandists, um, edited together footage to make it appear that I had targeted Chinese Australians by race, etc. Like, really, really maliciously splicing together footage to try and use this propaganda ex- against me, etc. And then they posted this stuff up saying, "Here's proof that Drew wasn't insulting Xi Jinping; he was trying to insult all Chinese people." And then they were tagging New South Wales police saying, "Charge Drew." And so the next day, yeah, the, the detective called me up and he said, like, you know, come back into the station. I want to talk about your statement. And I was and I was on the way to the airport. I said, why do you need me to come back in? I thought he, maybe he wanted to talk about the sign. Whether he, I was thinking maybe he wanted to um, charge me with, like, offensive language or something like that. And so I said, like, you know, I was peaceful protest. Are you looking at trying to charge me? And he said, oh, well, you better have a lawyer. Like, who's your lawyer? We'll talk through him. And so... Um, I ended up talking to my lawyer and, and he thought it was really, really dodgy how New South Wales police were trying to basically, at first they were trying to get me to go into the station um, without a lawyer present on the pretext of discussing my statement. But it's clear now that they wanted to arrest me or, or charge me over the sign. So they were trying to deceive me into going back to the station. Um, my lawyer wrote to them, he said, I will um, I will be taking immediate high court action for to defend Drew's freedom of speech if, if he's charged. Um, and the and the New South Wales police detectives wrote back saying, uh, we will inform you the second our investigation is finished. Drew's not necessarily going to be charged. And and so all this intimidation was was taking place. And I thought, I thought this was so bad for free speech in this country. So I said, okay, I'm gonna go back the next week. I'm going to put up a sign. This time I'm not gonna have a swear word on it. I'll just say free Hong Kong, free Uyghurs, free Tibetans, down with the CCP. A very simple message that people can't misinterpret. People can't maliciously try and, uh, you know, distort to, to try to smear me. I will just have a very simple message with um, that no one can ever say is racist. Um, and so I went back the next week and uh, we were joined by Hong Kongers, Tibetans, Hong, uh, Hong Kongers, Tibetans, Uyghurs, Chinese pro-democracy supporters. And um, actually, they were the most vocal this week. I mean, um, I sort of took a bit of a backseat. I had a sign, as I said, yeah, no profanities. They were the ones who were mostly leading the the protest uh hong kongers were chanting uh free free hong kong and pro-democracy slogans in cantonese uh chinese pro-democracy supporters were chanting stuff about tiananmen and stuff chanting stuff about pro-democracy um chanting stuff about democracy in mandarin it was at that point suddenly everything got everything kicked off um there were about 20 30 police watching us because they they i guess they were trying to stop the violence from the week before occurring again um suddenly but they, they hadn't intervened because we were very peaceful in the second follow-up protest, and I was actually a lot more quieter as well, believe it or not. Um, basically, basically, um, these pro-CCP supporters came again, and they started ch- like yelling stuff in Mandarin at the pro-democracy Chinese speakers um, in our crowd. And obviously, I don't speak Chinese, so I couldn't join in that you know debate. I couldn't join in that fracas. I just was standing up off to the side. I was chanting "Free Hong Kong" with at my with the with the poster, and then that's when the police brought me aside. And I guess they were trying to intimidate me into going home. They sort of like, they they officially gave me the charge sheet for the week before offensive language, saying you've got a court date. We're charging you with this, etc. Um, you've you've used offensive language. Um, you've like disturbed the public peace, etc. I, I was saying, am I under arrest? Because they weren't letting me leave, but they but I was saying, am I under arrest? And they they were saying you're not under arrest, but they wouldn't let me leave. The whole thing was just really weird. My friend Kintum started filming. They eventually let me let me leave with the sort of court slip, the charge sheet, and I sort of tried to rejoin my friends who were just again still trying to chant pro democracy stuff against these CCP supporters who were getting really aggressive and getting in people's face. I was completely peaceful. I was standing off to the side. I wasn't getting near anything. I mean, I wasn't violent by any means. And then that's when the police came back to me, and then they said, "We're giving you a formal move on order because the protest is now." Um, causing fear and alarm amongst the public and there's the risk of violent escalation. And I'm like, well, we're completely peaceful. There's only people who are, you know, threatening people and causing fear and alarm are the pro CCP supporters. Um, but I mean, this is, this is the, this is the uh, hypocrisy that we're trying to call out. I mean, the New South Wales police, apparently if you hold a peaceful pro democracy protest in the middle of Sydney and CCP supporters come in and they're aggressive and they're violent and they attack people, the New South Wales Police will just shut down your organize, your demonstration. They won't try and protect you. They won't try and protect your right to freedom of expression. They'll just say, oh, 
because of the risk of violence from the pro CCP supporters, you have to go home. You have to shut everything down. You have yeah, to go after the people down. breaking the law. Yeah, this is this is yeah, reminds exactly. me of this uh, this protest I um, I went to, to 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 film, and it was it was an anti uh, President Trump protest. This was a couple of years ago yeah. in front of Trump Tower in Lower Manhattan, uh, and there were like uh, about a dozen uniformed police officers there, you know, to protect the uh, the protesters who were anti anti-president Trump. It, in uh, Australia, could you do a protest legally that said, you know, F Scott Morrison? Of course, of course. So that's that's the thing that I, I pointed out. So like I, I gave media interviews after and, and people were saying, well, weren't you being provocative? And I was like, well, you go to any progressive rally, you go to, you know, climate rallies, et cetera. You see so many young people with signs that say F Scott Morrison, F the prime minister. And no one ever, no one ever is getting arrested for that. No one's getting, you know, no one's facing the risk of getting bashed, et cetera. And they shouldn't. I mean, I believe in freedom of expression. In a democratic country, we should be able to insult our leaders. In Australia, we've got a tradition, a culture where, you know, we're quite irreverent. We we have this sort of larrikin streak to us where, you know, we're not afraid to, you know, mock and take the piss out of our leaders. And we use coarse language. And, you know, we, we you know, no one's ever accused the strains of, um, of, of uh, being polite. You know, being... Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I was trying to say. And, and I mean, you walk down the street, I mean, so many times, you know, it's election campaign right now. And so many times on the television, like the journalists will go down the street and they'll try and do vox pops with citizens. Like, you know, what do you think about the prime minister? And like every fourth or fifth person will just go, ah, he's a dickhead. And like, just insult him or even use swear words and they bleep it out. But no one's getting arrested. No one's, no one's facing threats. No one's getting bashed. And they shouldn't. I mean, in Australia, we believe in the right to freedom of expression. You should be able to insult a political leader. You should be able to you know, offend a political leader. I mean, this is a guy with a million people in concentration camps. Why is it okay to, you know, say F Scott Morrison? But well, there's a, there's a very simple answer to that, Drew. You see, it's okay to insult your elected leaders, but Xi Jinping isn't elected, so it's not okay to insult mm -hmm. him. Loophole. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's almost like they're treating him like this sacred cow. And my whole point is he shouldn't be a sacred cow. This is a dictator with a million Uyghurs in concentration camps. A dictator who's presided over, you know, forced organ harvesting of prisoners, um, brutal persecution of the Falun Gong, brutal persecution of Tibetans, brutal persecution in Hong Kong, continues every almost every couple of weeks to threaten an invasion of Taiwan. This is a brutal, brutal dictatorship. And suddenly I'm the I'm the I'm the person causing offense because I insult this leader. No, people need to have some perspective and realize, you know. The person we should be outraged at is Xi Jinping, the man who's carrying out crimes against humanity on a massive scale. That's my point.